So you recently purchased an iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard, or you're thinking about getting one, and you're wondering, can it replace my laptop? Well, yes and no. Let's dive in. Hold up. Place go up when I pull up. They all on me like a What's up everybody? I'm Patrick Rambles, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff I like. This is a brand new channel, and I'll be uploading weekly, so if you like my stuff, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. So I've been using the iPad Pro plus Magic Keyboard for a couple of weeks now. And I gotta say, I'm truly impressed. In my last video, I unboxed the keyboard and I did an initial review for you guys. If you haven't seen it and you're interested, I put a link in the description or you can just click on the card at the end of this video. Today, I wanna share my experiences with you after using it for a little while and I wanna try and answer the burning question. Can it replace your laptop? Or in this case, has it replaced mine? The short answer is, no, it hasn't. But it's more complicated than that. Because what I've learned is that it's not trying to replace your laptop. Let me explain. For the longest time, tablets have been the awkward cousin of the smartphone, doing basically the same things, but on a bigger screen. So I always ended up buying tablets and selling them again, because I would grab my smartphone, even if my tablet was within reach. Some manufacturers have been trying to move away from that and try to make their tablets more like a laptop like Samsung when it introduced Samsung DeX into its flagship tablets. In my opinion, all that did was try to emulate a laptop experience poorly. Besides, I already owned a 13-inch MacBook Pro, which wasn't that much heavier, so I didn't need my tablet to have an identity crisis. And that is exactly the strength of the iPad Pro, because even with the Magic Keyboard, it's not meant to replace your laptop. It has its own purpose. There's some things I'd really rather do on my 16 inch MacBook Pro or that my iPad simply can't do, like heavy editing on Final Cut or if I need to do real multitasking with a bunch of windows open. I know there's multitasking on the iPad, but it's just not the same. On the other hand, the iPad can do a lot of things my MacBook can't do, like grab the screen and have a read on the couch, take handwritten notes or play a quick game or read a book. I mean, technically, you could do some of those things on a laptop too, but again, it's just not the same. Where the iPad and Magic Keyboard combination really shines is when you're like me and you leave your MacBook Pro in clamshell mode most of the time and use it only for heavy lifting and long work sessions. And you use the iPad Pro for, well, everything else. Another thing that shows that Apple isn't trying to replace the MacBook is iPad OS. Yes, there is now keyboard and cursor support, but the keyboard and cursor are used to fit the iPad and its operating system, not the other way around. Once I started to realize and appreciate this, I also started to mind the things I saw as drawbacks initially much less. For example, take the function keys role. Almost every review complains about it, including mine. But I don't really miss it anymore. It's super easy to change the volume and brightness by using gestures, and you can get to the home screen by a simple swipe. And if you really can't live without your escape key, there's an option in the settings menu where you can simply remap one of the other keys to act like it. Same thing goes for the backlighting on the keyboard. It does such a great job adjusting itself by using the iPad's ambient light sensor that I haven't once felt the need to adjust it manually, which you can still do in the settings if you really want. I heard a lot of people say, it's so expensive, why not just use a keyboard and a mouse? And I did use it like that while I was waiting for the Magic Keyboard to drop. But it's different for two reasons. One, it's definitely not as portable. And two, because the Magic Keyboard doesn't use Bluetooth. As soon as it snaps into the case and it hits the smart connectors, it works instantly. And the other way around, the second you take it off again, it immediately returns to the on-screen keyboard. No messing around with settings and pairing. It just works. By the way, in terms of keyboard cases for the iPad Pro, this is the only one with a fully functional trackpad built in. Even the new bridge keyboard with trackpad doesn't have all the functionality. I think it has to do with the advantage of smart connectors over the bridge's connection to the iPad, which is Bluetooth. And the keyboard is really phenomenal. Now, I do need to mention that I have the 12.9 inch version and I haven't worked on the 11 inch model. I would imagine it takes a bit of getting used to, as it will be slightly more crammed than the 12.9 inch version, which is the exact same size as the regular Apple keyboard. But of course it's not perfect. So here are some of the pros and cons to consider. Okay, some of the cons. 
It is a little difficult to open the case. You definitely need two hands and use a bit of force. The rubbery finish is nice and grippy and it feels premium, but it's an absolute smudge magnet, which is a problem if you're OCD like me. This thing gets gross just by looking at it the wrong way. The USB-C pass-through can't do anything but charge, but that's logical because the smart connectors are not designed to process a lot of data. And a lot of apps, even some of the main ones I use, like Google Docs or Notion, or YouTube for that matter, are not optimized for the trackpad yet. Also, a big drawback for me, I haven't found one email app that does everything I want. I know a lot of you guys like Spark email, but I don't like threaded emails and it won't let me turn it off. For now, I went back to using the somewhat boring, but relatively solid Outlook. So if you know an email client that does it all, hit me up in the comments. I don't like the camera position on the iPad. When used together with the Magic Keyboard, it hits you from this weird side angle, which makes it look like you're distracted by something more interesting. Having said that, it's still better than the potato camera on my 16-inch MacBook Pro. I mean, what is with that, Apple? All this R&D money spent on improving the speakers and including studio quality microphones? Is it that difficult to upgrade the camera? So for video conferencing with clients, I will still have to go sit in my office and use my external Logitech C920 webcam. It's super old, but it still beats the MacBook's webcam easily. And it allows me to get a much better angle than the iPad. The Magic Keyboard's trackpad is really great, but I did have to change the speed and the scrolling direction. Apple's natural scrolling direction just doesn't feel that natural to me. The keyboard's angles are great for using it as a laptop and even for watching videos or gaming. I think Apple had to limit the angles somewhat because the keyboard is very carefully balanced. I could imagine it tipping over much easier if the iPad could be pushed back any further. When it comes to gaming, I think we shouldn't really make a comparison. Some games, like first-person shooters, I really prefer playing with a mouse and a keyboard. But other games, like the fantastic and insanely addicting Grindstone, just need to be played on a touchscreen. Seriously guys, do not download this game. It will eat your time. There are some definite advantages of the iPad over a laptop. First, the iPad doesn't overheat. No moving parts and no fan noise. For some reason, my 16 inch MacBook Pro sounds like a plane is taking off whenever I have a few Chrome windows open. And that is on 32 gigs of RAM. The iPad, which tops out at six gigs of RAM, is quiet as a mouse and cool as a cucumber. What else? Awesome screen, awesome battery life, super versatile, easy enough to hook up to an external screen or to use with a sidecar. And of course the Apple Pencil brings huge advantages. And I just can't get over how useful the Magic Keyboard doubles as a charging stand. So to sum up, does the iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard replace your laptop? No, it doesn't. And it shouldn't. But it's definitely not just the tablet anymore either. What Apple managed to do here is to create something that is its own category. And I will definitely trade my trusty Samsung S10 Plus for the new iPhone 12 once it lands, bringing me back to the Apple universe entirely. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Have a great day and I hope to see you in the next one.